or 10 percent saving roughly is significant. Yeah. So uh, what do you think worked in favor of this government in terms of coming up with a solution to this big problem? So I think first and foremost is, uh, I think there's a strong political will. Unless there's a strong political will, it's extremely difficult to ram across any, any significant implementation uh, program uh, uh, in, the, in the government. So there was definitely a very strong um, uh, political will. I'm, I'm quite uh, happy to note, uh, to inform all of you that this is, this is, the, uh, this is a intervention which has the blessings of our Prime Minister. He has been very vocal about this. I even uh, he has been um, using various public platforms to you know, talk about it. So unless there is a strong uh, political will, you can't have this kind of a program where, you know, the entire stakeholders have to come together. It's a humongous task. Second important uh, uh, reason or factor which was responsible for it getting on the ground was increasing use of technology. So increasing use of technology, just about, you know, we are just 20 square-faced people in the whole organization. I am one of them, but rest of them people are from the private sector. So we have young guys using technology. We have, it, it's a technology data company. So, so extremely high level of technology usage and good people to implement the vision that has been given. I think these three things have uh, made it possible. But uh, I'm sure when you started off, things were not this rosy and you would have had your share of challenges. So, what were the typical challenges you faced when you started off six years ago? So, there were, there were various challenges. One is challenge of change. You know, changing is the biggest challenge. So, people were used to, in a uh, to do things in a particular way. And this was a whole new concept of doing things differently, where there's little uh, interference, human interference, and increasing use of technology. So yes, there was definitely a lot of challenge. If you, if you see the figures which we have just seen, first year we've been able to make only 500. Uh, we were struggling for 500 crore. But now when you see with cons consistent, you know, consistent engagement with the stakeholders and telling them the proof, you know, we've gone to such a length that when, when there are discussions with the state governments, central government, of course, central government offices were a little more open to it because it came out of uh, some kind of mandation in the early days. Was there a law or...? Yeah, there was a rule. We, uh, we had to amend the rule to ensure that this becomes a compulsory activity. Any procurement through public funds in the central government and central government offices will have to be uh, bought necessarily on the gem. And uh, that, that was a challenge in the sense uh, because you're talking about the entire government of India where Things of all kinds of are bought and, uh, you know, uh, procured. So, th th of course, there was that mandation was there, but uh, after consistent engagement and after, you know, uh, one, one good point that I would like to tell uh, the audience here is that uh, we engaged uh, some consultants who were smart people, I'll not name them, but um, uh, they, they came out with, you know, certain strategies in the sense that we mapped what state government is buying at what rate, and we kind of made a parallel uh, survey and told them that had you bought it on our platform, you would have resulted into 20% saving, 30%. And I think that did the uh, wonder. Okay, today, uh, what percentage of central government and central PSU procurement goes through GEM? Ideally, there are estimates which say 18% of the GDP, 15 to 18% of the GDP uh, is, in, uh, is government procurement. But that includes goods, services and works. So, GEM addresses only the goods and services part as of, as of now. But I'm quite happy to say that uh, there would be very, very few standouts who are not on the GEM. The answer to your question is that I, I believe that a, a large part of the procurement of Government of India is already on the GEM. On the GEM. And what about the states? I think there was a lot of challenges um, in getting the states, especially, especially those ruled by the opposition parties to get on board. What we've tried to do over, over this long, uh, journey of six years is try and convince them on facts and also through training and capacity building as to the advantages of, of, the, of the platform. And I'm, I'm very glad to say that if you see, there's good amount of growth. If you see the last three years figures, there's good amount of growth on the states. Of course, there's, uh, we have not reached uh, 
a, a plateau. We, we, we have a long uh, way ahead, but, but we see the trends in a positive way. So what percentage of the state and state governments and state PSUs do you think is now on board? Now the reason I asked you was I just wanted to understand the sort of headroom that is available for GEM going forward. So, so what I can tell you is uh, last year we did what two two lakh uh, uh, two lakh crore worth of uh, business on GEM, out of which one lakh roughly one lakh came out of uh, the central public sector undertakings because they have the transactional arms they do a lot of procurement, almost uh, 50, 50, 52 lakh crore came out of central government departments the various departments of Government of India and autonomous bodies, and almost 42,000 crores have come from, uh, from the states.